Tonight, a growing list of big name Republicans are already calling the race. That includes the chairwoman of the Republican National Committee. We need to unite around our eventual nominee, which is going to be Donald Trump. In the meantime, the same people who once tried to keep Trump from returning to the White House are now professing their love for him, quite literally. She actually appointed you, Tim. <laughs> and think of it, appointed, and you're the senator of his state, and she endorsed me. You must really hate her. <laughs> no, it's, uh, it's a shame. It's I, a shame. Uh-oh. I just love you. That effusive embrace is now running through to the party's very core. It is a grip that is now really embodied by the House of Representatives. Look at these numbers that we looked at today. 122 House Republicans have endorsed Donald Trump to be president once again. That column you see on the right is Nikki Haley's. She has just one member of Congress. And that lone House Republican endorsing Haley, a South Carolina representative, Ralph Norman, and he joins me now from North Charleston, where that Haley event that you heard from her just wrapped up. And Congressman, I'm so glad you're here because truly you have a singular perspective on this, at least when it comes to, to the halls that you roam on a daily basis. I think the question is, if there is still a path to victory for Nikki Haley, why are you the only member of Congress who see, seems to see it? Well, for, first of all, Caitlin, I was the one of three when she ran for governor, uh, with which she won twice. Nikki has been against the establishment from day one. And you know this, you cover politics. The establishment uh, is just that. And people get behind candidates for different reasons. Uh, I endorsed Nikki in, in uh, February of, of last year. Uh, I called Donald Trump before because I respect him. I said, President Trump, I'm going to endorse Nikki. And uh, he was real kind. and. Uh, I think at the time he didn't think she had a chance, but I knew Nikki had a chance. And I wish every American could have seen her backstage. I introduced her tonight. Mm -hmm. She is, is as resolved and determined as anybody I've ever seen. So the 48 st states left, she will compete. And I think it's good for the system. Competition is good, Caitlin. Uh, people can say all they want, uh, particularly the news media, get out, do this. Rona Barrett saying, uh, you know, you got to unify. Unify what? Uh, let's, let's go through the process. Let the, let the voters speak. Yeah, I should note, it's Republicans who are calling on her to drop out, not the media. I mean, you heard from Ron and McDaniel. They are, you know, typically a, a neutral member until the, the candidate is selected. But, you know, in, North, in South Carolina, where you are, that is the next state. She says that she believes she's going to do well there. She's been proven wrong and done well. Do you think that South Carolina is a must win for her? Well, obviously, she'd like to win all of them. I wish she would have loved to have won uh, New Hampshire. You know, you try to win all of them. That's not the real world. I will tell you, uh, she will do well in South Carolina, and she's in this thing. She's not going to quit. And the fact she's willing to risk that, she's going to go to town to town, just like she did tonight. She had probably 800 people tonight. That's what she's going to do across the state. That's how she won as governor. And uh, that's how she's going to... Uh, She's going to put up a fight. It's the same grit that I saw in her when, I, when we went in the state legislature together, when she beat a 30-year incumbent. You, you mentioned so, the word uh, risking that. That's what, what American... You, what do you think she's risking? I don't think she's risking anything. I mean, you've got to remember, she's willing to put the time in. She's willing to spend the money. She's willing to get up at 6 and go till, you know, 10, 11, 12 at night. She's willing to do all the interviews. And... Uh, it's just courage that she's doing this. I don't think I've seen another politician like her in, in my life, to be honest with you. Uh, everybody else would have gotten out. You saw it started, what, 14 candidates? Mm -hmm. It's down to two. Uh, they all typically, if they don't see a path to victory, uh, she sees a path, and it's two words, hard work. She doesn't care. But she'll risk the... Uh, when she goes up in South Carolina to put it to a vote, could she flounder? Yes, but she could also do very well. And she's anxious for, for and South what Carolina did you make, for Super Tuesday as well. You just mentioned that you talked to Trump after uh, when you said you were going to endorse her. I wonder what you made of his speech last night where he claimed that she said she won when she congratulated him on his win. 
He made fun of her outfit. You know, he implied that she'd be under investigation if she did win the Republican nomination. What did you make of how angry he was? I didn't understand it. I mean, he won. I mean, he won New Hampshire, as he did Iowa. And I know President Trump. Um, you know, I've, I've loved his policies. I like him as a person. Now, last night, it really surprised me. And I'm one that and the, the, the press has always asked me about, you know, is it his comments he makes, the names he gives people. It's actually funny uh, with Pocahontas, like uh, Low Energy Jeb, like uh, Little Marco, all those names, he can get away with that. Uh, but last night was a little bit more cutting that, and it really surprised me, really. I mean, to make fun of somebody's dress, um, and the way Tim Scott, you must hate Nick Hill, you know, I, I didn't understand that. But look, Donald Trump has been successful. Uh, he can say what he wants, and you're not going to change him, I'll tell you that. Well, and he calls her bird brain. I think people would say that that's classic Trump. But, Congressman, you know, one thing that you have said on the campaign trail for Nikki Haley repeatedly when questioned about what is her path to victory is you talk about the voters, and you say the voters should be the ones to decide. Obviously, everyone agrees with that. But, you know, when you talk about what the voters decide, I, I have to ask you, because you and I have never spoken before in an interview, about a, a text message that you sent to Mark Meadows. It was three days before President Biden was inaugurated, and you were urging the White House to use the U.S. military to prevent the peaceful transfer of power. Do you regret sending that message? The only thing I regret, I misspell uh, martial law. I misspell that. No, I didn't. I didn't. Won't, I, I, look, everything happened so quick in that election. Uh, the time that was given to see if the ballots were real, see if uh, you know, you've seen two thousand mules. Uh, most people have. There's a lot of questions. What's that was wrong with created by time? a guy that Trump and pardoned? I was created by who? Wasn't that created by a guy that Trump pardoned? I mean, the point of it is that movie is not based in reality. There is no, no election fraud, and their uh, courts have proven that. Republican judges that were appointed by Republican presidents ha have noted that. I mean, there was no elect, there was no evidence of that by no. the time January 17th rolled around, Congressman. Well, there were questions, as you know, there were questions throughout the election process. Uh, what happened in Georgia was unusual. What happened in Arizona was unusual. Look, I talked to the Congress people. Uh, that serve those particular states. But, uh, no, I don't regret that um, at all. And it's still questions that linger today. But uh, the... If, and we Sir, have got to get our Sir, what questions are there that right. linger today? Uh, because this is really important. We are approaching another election. And when you talk to Republican voters, in CNN exit polls, half of them don't believe that Joe Biden legitimately won the election, which he did. And calling for martial law because you have questions about the election, I think most people would agree is subverting the will of voters that you often talk about that are so important. No, I, look, uh, to keep this system honest, photo voter ID, which the Democrats tried to circumvent, they've been trying to, to circumvent that. Uh, what they're doing with the illegal aliens, with the, with the vote, get them registered to vote, is not right. That's what I'm talking about. What does that have uh, to do making with... Making sure... That's you call, every you're vote, call, every, calling for martial law, Kaylin, Congressman. Look, look, I texted uh, Mark Meadows. That's the only person. Uh, he didn't have the power. I asked him. Donald Trump was shocked, He was, was the chief too. of staff at the White um, House. Did he respond to your message that day? I don't think not, you've ever, uh, ever made clear what his acknowledgement of your message was. I don't... You know, I don't think he... Everything was going on. Everything was so fast, I don't think he did. But the bottom line is, we got to have secure elections, and whatever that takes, uh, there are a lot of questions that still exist. Um, you know, you've seen the lawsuits that, that were there. Uh, but, no, I, um, I wouldn't take it back. I, I misspelled it. I should have taken the time. I was in a hurry. And, uh, but, no, I, I would not... I don't regret that. Those lawsuits were all thrown out. None of them amounted to anything. The only place where they found they miscounted, Biden actually had a bigger margin than he initially did. Congressman, it is striking to hear you say that you stand by asking for martial law to be declared three days before Biden was elected. Uh, I just wanted to make sure we, we talked to you about that. So thank you, Congressman Ralph Norman, for your time uh, tonight. My pleasure. Thank you.